Yeah, so the, this, what we call meditation in this approach is like a artificial, it's artificial environment, uh, like a laboratory. And what's artificial about it is that we put aside, you know, 15, 20 minutes where there's nothing urgent to do. So we suspend all activities. Um, and so we, there's nothing to do, no, no doing. It's like a pause, it's break, vacation. Uh, also, we temporarily put on pause any type of thinking, um, thinking in terms of trying to solve some issue we have in our life or trying to figure out something that's also put on pause, we can figure out later. So that's what's special about it is that it's uh, no doing necessary, no doing necessary. And um, what is an obstacle to this kind of meditation is actually our, a lot of um, wanting to meditate well, trying to uh, stop thoughts, trying to calm the mind, trying to uh, reach some kind of witnessing somewhere, uh, trying to uh, reach a heightened state or a pleasurable state. So these also are actually a, a big obstacle to uh, meditation. And actually people who are very dedicated, spiritual seekers, actually it's a, it's, can we are tripping ourselves by trying to do too much. There's too much internal action, too much uh, subtle spiritual uh, efforting uh, that um, actually prevents us to just be, you know? So that's important. Um, to suspend also any type of goal, to suspend any type of goal, any spiritual goal, any uh, meditation goal. So it's a state of complete passivity, non-engagement. Um, it's actually much more similar, like good meditation. It's much more similar, let's say, when you take a vacation and you arrive finally at the beach and then you're kind of tired and then you have a comfortable position. You don't worry about position. And then you just close your eyes and it's like too tired to think about anything. So that's actually much closer to experiencing our true nature because there's less of the static, you know? Um, so as far as thoughts, um, it is natural that there are thoughts, you know, as long as there's a, a breath, uh, there's the brain, uh, this will produce thoughts in the form of some memory or some uh, inner voices or some pending business. So we are not trying to stop them uh, because the very effort of trying to stop them um, creates more tension. Um, at the same time, we are, there's this kind of relaxed, you know, effortless uh, alertness that we don't allow ourselves to go into the past or the future. So the thought may come, some flash about the past or some flash about the future. It comes, the only thing we, we do, we just try to watch it and, and, and not, not allow ourselves to to develop it into a story. So that's the, the only important thing. There's a story from Buddha that he was once traveling with his disciples and, and uh, he saw there was a man next to a creek with a stick and he kept stirring the, the water. He kept stirring the water and, and, and Buddha asked him, hey, what are you doing? And he said, well, I lost something here. And so, and the water is muddy. So I'm trying to clear it. 
to find that thing. And and Buddha said, well, why don't you just 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 relax and just sit, don't stir the water, just relax and the water will naturally, once it's not stirred, the mud will go down and the water will be clear. And then you will see it. So that's the whole principle also about this type of effortless presence meditation is that by trying too much, by trying uh, to, uh, you know, uh, do something with the breath or trying to, to stop the mind, this is like a spiritual stick stirring and kept stirring a static in the water. And actually counterintuitively, just allowing things to be as they are, allowing them to be as they are somehow naturally and naturally the mind will quiet and uh, naturally will transition to noticing what is continuous in our experience. Our experience is somehow two parts if we really are curious about our experience of moment to moment, or then try to do something, our experience will notice these two parts. There is a changing part, is a phenomenal part where they are, uh, is the body, the world, and the mind that appear. So the body appears to awareness as sensations in the body, energies in the chest, various sensations that come and go. The mind appears to awareness as thoughts, images, inner voices. And the world appears to awareness as sounds or, uh, you know, the breeze and things like that. So there's the phenomenal aspect all the time changing, 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 coming and going. And usually for most of us, we are all the time sucked into the changing, the thoughts and the feelings, the images all the time sucked in a perpetual washing machine, trying to influence the, the cycle of the washing machine. Um, and there is the other part which is usually overlooked is the aspect which is changeless. The aspect which is just what is called the, the isness, the sense of being, which is actually all the time and it doesn't change. And this isness is just is, and then is effortlessly aware. Um, so the purpose of meditation is to allow us to experience that which is always here and that which is changeless. All right, so there's some fear about it and then you can start now. It's hard to think about. <laughs> uh, this is right like, a, it was just some, uh, <laughs> some theory about it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like we need to, to, to know a lot of stuff in order to fucking stop. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll give you my best take on what I would recommend whenever you have the impulse to, you know, I like to meditate, man. Uh, that's the, the best protocol I can suggest. And, and also it's important to, it works better rather than having a scheduled that you force yourself or I do it because Buddha said or because Mihai said, uh, or, you know, so it comes more like you just want it, you just want it. And then meditation works best when some spontaneous comes from the love of peace, love of truth out of curiosity and then, yeah, not to force yourself if you don't feel like it. No, it's, it's better to do something else. So once we get to this place, then 
find oneself a comfortable, comfortable, relaxed position so that the body is the least uh, static. And we are feel free, and free to change the position so we don't inflict any discomfort on the body. So we are not trying to focus on anything in particular. So we don't force the attention in some way. We simply allow attention to be free and open. And we allow and welcome the flow of perceptions, sounds, thoughts, sensations, without trying to change anything, without trying to get rid of some feeling, and without any sense of a goal. Simply watching the phenomena with benevolent indifference. Also, we not focus on one aspect of our experience, like focus about the thoughts or focus on a sensation in the chest. We have uh, this relaxed, global noticingness of all of the phenomena as they appear. Thoughts may naturally arise from the day. You simply notice them as they flow through the field of awareness, yet not becoming a taxi, not allowing ourselves to go into a story simply allow ourselves to just be.
temporarily suspend any, any goal, any sense of controlling or reaching anything. being present to what is. If there is any sense of agitation in the body or any tension or any what we call feelings like stress or anxiety or we, we simply welcome it completely which means to not try to change it Like we are watching the ocean and trying to change the waves. So not trying to focus on one particular wave. We have a, we just open to the totality of the now. without trying to figure out, analyze, label. non-interference and some type of indifference toward what comes and goes. Whenever we catch ourselves somehow that, oh, I've been some daydreaming for some time without noticing, right at that moment we can just unhook and come back to being aware of the totality of our experience. The attention is like the camera, you can zoom in into a sensation or a sound, but here it's the opposite. The attention is zoomed out, free. So we notice this, this inner emptiness background of space.
noticing what is actually here. No labeling. Thoughts, sensations, sounds, and that in which they appear, that which perceives. Some of us may have some, depending on the day, we may have some pre-existing emotional state. And when we see like that, that usually becomes more obvious. Some knot, some unpleasantness in the body. So whatever it is, stress, sadness, Whatever it is, if there is any discomfort or unpleasantness, we simply let go trying to change it. And let it be whatever it is. It's not necessary to focus into it. there's any reaction towards something, simply witness the reaction as if it's a curious, interesting stranger. Doing nothing to it. You can notice how actually things are happening. Thoughts are popping up by themselves. You have no idea what thought will come next. And you can check how as a thought comes, a comment judgment, something. You see that it's, this thought is not me, it's not I. It's a thought arising and then collapsing. And what we are is aware of it. Whatever sensation or feeling can see it's not me, it's not I, it's a sensation, energy floating through the space of awareness.
just like sounds. We already know this. Sound perception appears. Like this voice. It's not me. It's not I. It's a sound that I am aware of. These thoughts ultimately are sounds in our head. So notice too that this so-called awareness we don't decide. Awareness is awareing by itself. It's happening. So notice this, this wordless sense of presence. Something is here. Notice what happens when we don't get involved with these thoughts. We don't, we're not trying to do anything to the feelings. This uh, Indian sage Ramana Maharshi said, just notice, let what comes come, let them go as they go, <clears throat> and notice whatever remains, whatever is continuous. as the experience of our true nature. That which doesn't go anywhere. That which is aware all our life of thoughts and feelings, yet is seldom recognized. Notice how the thoughts, sensations, they kind of appear onto this empty, invisible stillness. And then they fade away, they collapse back into this aware emptiness.
was the Zen master who said, if you sit meditation in order to reach enlightenment, you are wasting your time. You sit in meditation in order to experience our true nature, not to reach enlightenment. This lack of activity and lack of doing, and trying to control and manage, anticipate, this subsides a little bit. We are more able to notice what is actually here. A sense of easiness. And this sense of easiness, this empty aware silence. It's always available and present. Even in the midst of worst trigger. is the source of peace. This peace. So actually real peace is the experience of our true nature. This witnessing meditation, as well as what's called self inquiry question, are some tricks to allow the mind to settle so we experience that what we really are. that what we really are, whatever that is, it's already whole and complete. It's divine, unconditioned intelligence. Our best ideas and creativity and understandings, they come out of that. Our natural state, which was covered and veiled by all these inner stories and chatters and trying to control and deficiency stories and
there's a sense of may not appear at the beginning, but if we are interested, it the sense of causeless contentment. Just being in the now. I sometimes drop some self-inquiry question because it helps to point us back to what we really are. And we can ask the question in meditation sometimes without expecting any answer from the mind and rejecting any answer from the mind. We can throw in this question What is aware of our experience right now? What is hearing the traffic? any thoughts pop up with some answer it's a thought it's not what we really are it's a thought a thought is not aware if a thought pops up we can bring it back and say to whom does this thought appear The easiest answer is to say, well, to me, me. Okay, what am I? So these questions like, what am I? What is aware? Are not meant to be answered. It's more like, we drop the question and then just be just silence, aware silence. This is a very powerful technique, provided that we are really interested in the question. What is aware right now? It's interesting and useful exercise to, as we they say, end the period of non-doing and no activity. So we allow for the our awareness to open the eyelids just a little bit first, just a little bit. We simply allow this uh, 
visual perceptions to, to appear in awareness. We can linger a little bit with, without focusing into any object, without labeling or accessing memory. Do the same thing as we did before, just now there are visuals as well. So that's a uh, very accessible and in our, our daily activities, we don't have time to, to meditate, to shut down activity often. So but we can easily, you know, as we are in line somewhere in post office or yeah, we work and then we just take, take a minute and the eyes open, just, just be. We can kind of go back for a moment to where we are, you know, it's Mm-hmm.